Before we use any power tools, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this. There is no more important safety rule than to wear these. Safety glasses. Hi all. Rosie here, Arthur's American cousin. As Pete is still using rubbish audio recording. Which trips out when he is using the lathe. Arthur and I will be covering the narration. Why is Rosie on this video? I do a great job on my own. Today Pete is making something called a dibber. Gardeners use them for planting bulbs. First he is milling some ash branch into about 50 by 50 millimeters. Just over a foot long. This is speeded up, it actually took about 5 minutes, to make the 4 blanks. Today's plan is to cut 3 dibbers in different ways. The first is mounted in the chuck but he will avoid using the skew chisel. The second will be turned between centers for those who do not own a chuck. Finally Pete will turn one the way he prefers to cut them. Using the spindle roughing gouge, Pete quickly knocks off the corners. Which is odd as we just saw him cut a round log into square blanks. Pete likes to step back a section at a time, and get it to rough round fast. Then he will do a couple of passes moving the tool slowly to get a good finish. Be aware when you do it down here, you're a long way off of the center of that tool rest. So don't push it too hard here. There's no need to either. Having knocked it off roughly, a nice smooth cut to get a nice finish on it. And then look at the size. That's a bit bigger than I want at the moment. I'm not making these for any measurement, apart from roughly what my hand is. And that's about right. Okay, going to switch to a half inch spindle gauge now. And knock this end off. This is just right on camera. I'm taking a little bit extra off of here because our point mark. I want to lose, and that's going to be about there. Reckon there. Yep, yeah, like that. 
This is an offset bead going here. I want this bit to be wider than the handle. Bead and I start looking at getting the blade on this. Again, still being gentle. Has the sound failed again? I think so, yes. How far did he get? I don't know. I was checking my email. Oh, okay. Well, he used the parting tool the size of the end of the taper. Now he is going to attempt to cut it with a spindle gouge. Pete will probably make a right pig's ear of this. He doesn't normally cut like this. Did he mention set the tool rest to the taper angle? I don't know if he did. Anyway just like you set the tool rest straight to get a straight cut. You can set it to the taper angel to get a taper cut. Ha ha. Did you see that? He totally screwed that cut up. Bet he was looking to see if he could talk instead of paying attention. Well you can't. We are covering for you again. If you like this video folks please remember to click the thumbs up button below. And if you are not already a subscriber please hit that subscribe button too, then you will know when I and possibly Arthur if he hasn't been sacked are on again. So that's it. Little half inch spindle gouge. And no. Half inch spindle gouge. One taper. Gone again. Okay, because this is in a chuck. Pete can remove the tailstock and trim off that damaged bit where the point was. Though he's giving it a little extra support with his hand. Then he just gives it a quick once over with 120 grit abrasive. To hide his bad cutting. Then the twit paused the video while he went looking for his burning wire. And forgot to unpause it. Luckily we are doing three, and we can explain it on the next one. Well that is the first one done. Took him about 10 minutes. Is anyone still watching? We will know. YouTube flags an alarm if you go to sleep. You now have a 2 seconds intermission while he rigs up for A between centers cut. This piece is held between a Robert Sorby Steb center and a standard live center. The cutting is pretty much the same. 
starting with a spindle roughing gouge. Once again Pete will quickly remove waste material. Once the corners are off he will refine the cut with some slow passes of the tool. Pete is stopping the lathe to show you that the finish is terrible. There is a spiral on the timber from moving the gouge too quickly. He doesn't realize that his cameras are not picking that up. Anyway he goes on to explain not the shape is close, he is going to do some finishing cuts. Aiming to get the blank parallel and smooth. Before the next step. This is the same as the last one, step down the handle to the right size. Switch to the half inch spindle gouge to shape the handle. And a pommel. Then like before he will use the parting tool to get a size on the end of the taper. This time Pete will use the skew. He really didn't like cutting a taper with a spindle gouge. but we did make Pete use a smaller skew than he wanted. This is a three-quarter inch skew. As the cut is pretty much the same we have speeded it up to double speed. I have other things to do you know. End speech. Despite the milling at the start, being designed to get the pith to the outside. So that it could be cut away in the turning. Pete in his infinite daftness, likes the look of it on this piece. So he is going to keep it. Quick bit of sanding. Then Pete will use the skew to make some small V cuts. This will be for the wire burning that we missed out on filming in the first piece. Pete likes to use a wire for burning. There is nothing special about it. A bit of standard hardware store wire, fixed between a pencil and a piece of wood Pete was playing with on the lathe. The handles are important never try to hold just a wire. This method was common, but now it may be a safety concern. So Pete will show an alternative method using a piece of wood. Those stirring sticks, you get in coffee shops are ideal. This may be a safer method. Incidentally, that injury you can see on Pete's hand was obtained doing the dangerous sport of cooking dinner. Pete, likes to make the patterns of marks on every handle unique. They probably are not really, but he freehands them differently on each one. A quick coat of lemon oil to finish off, makes them smell nice on the shop shelves. No hero moves here. Shape it down so that about an eighth of an inch of timber is left. Then release the tailstock and finish with a saw. Which is much easier if you are not trying to do it under a camera. As you can see only a small bit to tidy up by hand. Third and final one for filming. 
there will actually be 12 made today. But Pete is much better when there are no cameras switched on, and the music we can't share on YouTube is playing. This one is cut the way that Pete prefers to cut these. Except I know what is coming and he will miss a step. Notice that the chuck is just gripping on the square end of the blank, this works just fine especially as light tailstock support is used as well. Apparently there is a knot in the middle of this blank. Or at least that is his excuse. I suspect he just looked at the screen and fell off the bevel. There may be some questioning why Pete cuts the handle at the tailstock end. Quite simply he is right-handed, and cutting the taper right to left is easier. No editing on this one. It will take him about 10 minutes, so if you want to sneak out and put the kettle on, he will never know. Otherwise put your favorite music on, kick back and enjoy the shavings. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Also if you are not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. Then you will get a notification when I do my next show with Arthur and Pete. Don't nag, woman. You already asked them to give this video a thumbs up. I am certain that they will have already done it. Whatever you do, do not mention the buy me a coffee link, in the description. If Pete gets any donations he may buy a good microphone. So I will not be needed anymore. Typical of you Arthur. No ambition. If Pete buys a microphone I would just start my own channel, and it would be great. But no. Just scroll down far enough to like and subscribe. There is absolutely no reason to read the comments. This seriously is unedited, we even left in the moment when Pete sneezes, see if you can spot it. See? I told you he missed a step. He was supposed to finish the end of that pommel. Then use the cone lid center, with some paper towel, now he will have to finish that off the lathe. Just as he did before, Pete is using the parting tool to get the taper size, he will also rough cut some steps down, to it to get the taper started. He also forgot to set the tool rest to the taper angle. He really is losing the plot. He is going on about the inch and a quarter skew, something about cutting just below the center line. 
but I expect you all know that anyway. Change the flipping camera. Hey Pete, your arm is in the way, change the camera. Oh yes, of course, that was yesterday. So he can't hear me. Well he's using the burning wire, to put the marks on the dibber. You saw that on the last one, sort of about an inch apart on the pokey part of the stick, then a random possibly unique pattern on the handle. Well that is kind of it folks. Entering the closing stage of the video. So we have basically seen the same design repeated three times first one only using spindle roughing gouge, spindle gouge, and parting tool but held in a chuck. Second one was between centers using a small skew, alongside the gouges. Pete uses a step center, because he has one and likes it. But a four prong or any drive center you have would do the job. Finally the way that Pete would cut them himself, which is held in a chuck, using a larger skew for the taper. Pete claims it is harder to fall off a larger skew. Unless you sneeze. Oh and right at the beginning, Pete milled the blanks from the log using a bandsaw, think the lesson there was getting the pit to the outside so it can be cut away.
This video was primarily made for the Facebook group, Wood Turning for Beginners. Dibbers are simple shapes but incorporate some nice cutting opportunities. The size is quite fluid as well, so they can be turned on almost any lathe. Which makes them excellent for beginners to practice on.